All right, this is uh, Realtor Fight Club episode 94. What? Okay. Welcome to another episode of Real Estate Fight Club. What's up, Jamer? Oh my God, your voice. Oh, this is good. This <laughs> My voice is back compared to what the hell it was. You're like, list with me. <laughs> Damn it. Buy the tell, house. Let me tell you the joy in my family with Sharon and Bronson and my mom when I could not speak for oh. four days straight. <laughs> I mean... I can imagine. They really were happy. They were happy. Well, I'm glad you're feeling better. I'm ready to freaking battle. Like, you're going down today. I'm in a mood. Okay? Good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fine. I love it. All Usually right, I'm fired up. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for another episode of Real Estate Fight Club. We're so glad you're here today. Jen and I are going to duke it out over this. Is a pocket listing better or worse for your seller? In other words, if you try to sell it without going to the MLS, is that better or worse for your seller? This is a good one. What say you, Jen Mertlin? I mean, I mean. <laughs> I like pocket listings. Why? Okay. So my caveat is, is it like, it does depend on the seller, but like, here's the thing. So before I was a, a realtor, <laughs> two syllables a real a tour <laughs> i was a wholesaler and that's basically all pocket listings mm -hmm. and so we would get the property under contract and explain to them this is how we do it i can only buy it if i can resell it and blah 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 right and so then i would have to go out and like actively seek buyers mm -hmm. and the benefit to the seller was that they don't have like random people coming through at random times. It's inconvenient for them. Like we would, I would just seek sellers and, or seek buyers and do like open house style. Like this is when we're showing it. You can either come or not come like this is it. Right. So mm -hmm. like for the seller, they signed up with me because it was like a lot easier. It was just smoother. Mm -hmm. Most of the time. I mean, I was a dual agent, not really not an agent, obviously, but you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it was like, they, there was a meeting of the minds there. Like, this is what it was. I mean, we had to, at that time it was processing short sales. So we had to get the bank involved, but it just was what it was. Yeah. It was just a lot easier. And does that translate into, um, the average residential it can. Situation? It depends on what they want. Right. So like, if they are, if they are the type of people that value their time heavily, then yeah. What strikes me when you were talking about the whole wholesaling thing is what a different market that is than where we are right now. In yeah, <laughs> like the fact that you were hunting for buyers. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Weird. I mean, that was a long time ago, right? But like, yeah. but still, I think pocket listings. I, I mean, I understand. I I understand the downside of pocket listings. Like, I get Do it. You? Right? <laughs> Like I'm about to, like I'm about to show you. Yeah. Tell me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This, this, okay. Caveat as well. Mm -hmm. uh, if your seller's priority is complete convenience and I don't want to be bothered. Sure. Maybe. Right. But if we're talking about the majority of sellers who are looking to maximize their investment, so looking to get the most equity, then there is no argument that taking it to the public will uh, produce the best offer, in my opinion. I think it depends on the agent. Okay, so if you take it to the market and you're an agent that doesn't really do, like you're an agent that takes pictures with their iPhone and it's like in that fish, I'm, I think I'm having empathy scratchy throat. <laughs> Good. I like that. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we're in this together. I no, but it's like it's like in a fish fish bowl, and you don't syndicate it anywhere, and whatever, right? Like then, no, it's not. But like, I see your point. Like, if we're talking about like the average, the average seller who money is, they like you said, they want to maximize their equity, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you we're going to talk about a great agent. Mm -hmm. 
then yeah, I, I mean, I'll agree with that. Yeah, hey, <laughs> thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us today on Real Estate Fight Club. That's the end of that. The end. But like, you uh, can understand the benefits of a pocket listing depending on the seller. For sure. And I have done that where they don't want people through their house. They're not ready, but sure. If you found the perfect person that gave us a month occupancy post close, yeah. like all those other things kind of applying. Yes. I mean, most yeah. of the time, if we have a buyer and we're circle prospecting and somebody agrees to sell the house, I mean, that's kind of, that's a pocket basically mm -hmm. like, and that's pretty easy to do too. And they're usually really happy. Yeah. Like they're excited. Sure. When you think back, do you, um, do you have this experience? Um, if I list a house in, let's say a, a neighborhood, Anderson township, let's say if you're familiar with Cincinnati mm -hmm. and I think, well, I'm going to call the 10 agents that I know do a lot of business in Anderson right. I'm gonna see if they have buyers. Right. Um, you go through those and they don't have a buyer or whatever in an average market. Or you call the other people you were competing with to get the listing. Oh, that's always a good one. Yeah. By the way, yeah. If you have a buyer, feel free to bring them by. But you go to the market then because that didn't produce anything. Let's say you go to the market and it's some random ass agent that you didn't even know True. that has the buyer for that. True. And you would have never found that True. buyer. True. Right? I mean, that's the thing, right? Like there's how many of our agents in your area? Like if we're looking in Miami, what is there? 5 billion agents in Miami? Right. Like half of them won't even know how to do real estate and a 10th of them will have like all the buyers. Right? right. So it's like, yeah, it's kind of, I think it, it could be a good way if you have active, if you have active people that are looking anywhere, it is best to cast a wide net, put it out to the market. Correct. Yeah, sure. If you have a very specific house or a very specific buyer, I would make the argument that maybe it, you're probably going to end up finding the buyer yourself. And so then, a, then being a pocket listing may or may not matter. Mm -hmm. no, I can see that. Yeah. Like if it's like a really weird house where it requires a lot of explanation, this mm -hmm. happens to be my specialty. <laughs> like I don't even go and be like, your house requires some explanation. <laughs> they're Lucky like, you. yes, it does. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so true. Do you think that, um, the most important message probably around this then for our, our, our listeners right now is um, that really this is a discussion to have with your sellers. What is most important is convenience right. and privacy and you have four kids and three dogs and getting out of the house is a disaster. Then, right, let's hold it open for three hours on a Saturday and run as many buyers through. Right. Because there are some, like on the back end, there's some MLS rules that people have to deal with. MLSs have all these crazy rules, right? Okay. It's like, okay, well you can't, sometimes it's like, you can't um, put restrictions on the showings. Like it can't be open house style. And it's like, okay, why? So now you're forcing them to be a pocket listing. Then it's like, oh, well you can only, you can have a pocket listing, but you can only sell to like or you can have a listing, but now it's like, you can do pocket, but only sell, or what is it coming soon? Yeah. But only coming sell soon. to like your brokerage. Okay. Well, that's a pocket listing. Like mm -hmm. this is stupid. <laughs> well, they do want us to take it to the masses. They want do it to they? be available do to they? everybody. I think they do. I, think I just they do. gave you two examples that says that they don't. <laughs> well, they, but you know, intuitive. you know, uh, Kentucky just took away the coming soon. I think is that, did you see that? Oh, I don't it's not see. even a thing you can do now in Kentucky. Whatever. I mean, people take advantage of things. I know. But I know. Um, it's happening. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I think having the communication with the with the client is critical. It but is. I also think being real with yourself. Like, am I a person that is? Am I the type of agent that puts it on the MLS, puts a sign in the yard, and prays to whoever that it will sell? Or mm -hmm. am I the type of agent that's like, okay? who are the buyers for this property? Where do they currently live? Let me go after them. Who are the agents that sell here? Let me go mm -hmm. after them. How am I going to find a buyer for this house? Mm -hmm. And just be honest with yourself about who you are and what this house really is. Yeah, because you're right. If you're the three P's, like put the sign in the yard, put it on the MLS and pray. Like if that's your MO, which is happening a lot right now, right. Uh, then yeah, you're you're hundred percent right. I think you bring up a good point about thinking about the um, the buyer and where they might be and where to go target them prior to listing. Because from a seller's standpoint, couldn't you say, hey, look, there's an advantage if I find the buyer because I'm going to 
uh, maybe I'll reduce my commission by a percent or something. What? I can't you a little hear money? you. It's I know. what I can't. Don't don't do that. You can, you can do that. I'm editing you out. You can do that. You don't do, do it. That. I'll do it for five percent all day long. Oh my god. For five percent, I'll freaking do that all day long. Don't do it. You don't need to. You don't need to. Oh my god, we're gonna fight. No, but I'm looking to build the relationship and do business with these people in the future and to get referrals from them. And they'll pay you. And yeah, they'll pay me, but I think 5% is fair. And then I would say, I would say, gosh, how long did it take Monica to reduce her commission? Oh, she just offered it? Well, no. that's her money. Imagine what she's going to do with your money. No, that I didn't just reduce my commission. I reduced it if I bring the buyer. Whatever. So how hard is she going to work to find a buyer? How Very many hard because I'm making 5%. To, how many days did you show up to work it, to make less money? None? Never? Okay. Exactly. I'm making more she, money. She won't you're, you're acting like I'm making less money. I'm making more money. No, your opportunity costs, Monica. You can either go and find a buyer for this property, or you could take another buyer out and potentially make more commission. Which one are you going to do? I'm going to find, I'm going to go for the 5% because in this market, it's super easy to go find a buyer. Anyway, we're, that's a different discussion. Oh my God. We're not allowed to talk about percentages anyway. Isn't that a something? Oh yeah, that is something. We oh, we're going to get a wrist this slap is again. How she does hers. Okay. Anyway, back I, to the I, main always, point. I didn't say I always do it. I said, you can do it. <laughs> All right. And, I feel like we I should have. go back to our corner. You're in timeout. Oh my God. I'm going to <laughs> to be in timeout. <laughs> All right, let's take a short break and hear a word from our partners. And when we return, we're going to have the final punches. Welcome back. Let's get back in the ring. I mean, if you were with us in the beginning, you know that uh, our last segment did not end well. It just <laughs> did not end well. It did not end well. I'm glad we have sponsors and partners to give us a little separation. Yeah, we needed a little <laughs> break for sure. Then did you uh, ask people about uh, the I did. Listings? I mean, I did. And we have a great guest after, so make sure that, that you stay tuned and check him out. So wait. Yep. So wait. All right, good. So give me the number one reason that you think you should do a pocket listing. I think you should do a pocket listing if you have a unique property that is not for the masses or you have a seller where time, like they just don't want a lot of people in and out of their house mm -hmm. and they don't really, they understand that they may or may not be taking a price reduction because of that. Mm -hmm. They may or mm -hmm. may not. May or may not. All right. And I think that the number one reason you want to do uh, uh, you do not want to do a pocket listing is uh, if you are trying to maximize the seller's investment and trying to make the most money on the listing, it would make sense to take it out to the masses. Maybe. Dot, dot, dot. A hundred percent. I think that's going to have to be the end of today's battle. What do you guys think? How do you feel about this? Do you have a common practice? We're curious. Let us know. Go to the Facebook page. It's Real Estate Fight Club podcast, real estate or Facebook page. And uh, <laughs> let us know what you think. We are interested. Exactly. And if you enjoyed this, please share it with a friend. We are happy to have more listeners. And if you are curious about eXp and want to learn the benefits, please give me a call. 513-400-1691. All right. Thanks, Monica. I hope you get better. Um, thanks, Jen. I'm better. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye.